Using a retro gaming front end like Launchbox is great for browsing and launching your games. But some emulators don't allow this, and sometimes you just want to boot into the computer rather than starting up a game. So let me show you how to use Launchbox to run any emulator as if you ran it from your desktop. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. I've recently been building up my ultimate retro emulation PC, where I wanted to put a mini PC into our family room to turn our large screen TV into a retro gaming centre. Now this is going to include all the home computers and the retro consoles, right up to the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and of course all of the Amigas and Atari STs, and of course DOS emulation. Now in my last video I was setting up my home computer emulation using my favourite standalone emulators and then linking those into Launchbox which is my favourite gaming front end. And that then is going to give me all the full browsing and launching experience for all of those retro games. Now that all worked well for most of the emulators but I find that some emulators don't allow you to launch directly into a game. And also, um, I quite often want to launch just the emulator and then use the retro computer from its command line or desktop so that I can do some coding or mess around with applications. So in this video, I'll show you how to make links in Launchbox that simply run the emulators without launching any game. We'll create a new section and interface so that we can browse our list of emulators and then launch them directly from the main interface, almost the same as if we were just launching a game. So let's get all this set up. So we're going to look at a few different emulators in this video, but the first one to have a go with is this retro virtual machine. So this is a, a really great emulator that does a few of the, I, I guess, mostly UK based um, computers. Um, so it covers the ZX Spectrum range, the Amstrad CPC range, it also has one MSX computer which you can emulate, and then a couple of Nintendo consoles. Uh, but it's really the um, home computers that I like this emulator for. So if, if I boot into one of these, so basically what you do is you create virtual machines here. Um, you can create multiples of each virtual machine to have in different states. Um, but when, when you launch into one, it gives you a really nice emulation of the actual computer itself. But one of the great things is that it handles the cassette recorders um, very, very well. So we have a little virtual cassette recorder, and inside that then you can you can load in discs or, or sorry, sorry cassettes uh, and attach them to your computer. But you then run the computer as if you were sat at the real machine. So you have to use all of the proper load uh, uh, commands to get the programs loaded in of the cassette player. And of course you have the cassette player buttons on here. So, so it really does emulate that whole experience of actually using one of these old computers. But the, but the problem with this as regards our ultimate uh, emulation PC setup is that it does not play nicely with Launchbox. So in my um, setup video, um, so please do have a look at that if you want to have a look at um, how to set up the general emulators. Uh, in that, we were able to set up emulators and when we launch them, we give them a reference to the game file that we want to work with. Uh, and that would then launch the emulator, preload the game, and we just jump straight into the game. This, this emulator does not work that way. It isn't able to preload games for us. So what we want to do is to set up a little icon or, or effectively a game inside Launchbox where we can go and browse through our emulators. We will have one which is for this retro virtual machine emulator. And when we launch that, call it a game, it will take us here. So it will simply just launch the emulator as a standalone program so that we can then go off and do whatever we want to. So let's have a look at how we get that set up. So when you install any application in Windows, um, even these emulators, you end up with an executable file. So that is the actual program file that runs your application. So with the Retro Virtual Machine, um, when you download that, you get an, an archive file, you extract that out, and you simply have this one single file, which is the program itself. 
So I've saved that onto my computers in my emulators sort of folder. So that's the file which we need LaunchBox to actually run. So sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to find where those executable files are. So if, if you have obviously extracted it somewhere, then you'll know where they are. But sometimes the application installs through the normal Windows system, uh, such as these applications here. So these end up being a shortcut on my desktop. And this gives us an easy way of finding where the executable file is. So if I, if I right click on any of the shortcuts, I can come down here and I can open the file location or I can also look in the properties. But if I open file location, you'll see it pops me up in a window and it then shows me exactly where that Amiga Forever.exe file is. And this is the actual path for it. And again, if I click at the end here, you can see that more as the normal sort of DOS style path. So once we know where that executable file is, we can now link that into LaunchBox. So within LaunchBox, we have an arrangement of sort of games and platforms. So we have some categories here. We have some actual platforms, which is a, a system. And then within that system, we then have games. So what we're going to do is we're going to create almost like a fake platform that we're going to call emulators. And then inside that emulators platform, we're going to create games. And each of these games will actually be one of our emulators, which we can then just launch straight into the emulator itself. So let's, let's make a start on that. So if we go up to our tools menu, we want to go to manage and platforms. And we're going to add in a new platform. And we're going to call this platform emulators. So once we've added the name, the important thing then is we need to come down here and there's a checkbox for disable ROM auto import. And we need to make sure that that is ticked. If, if you don't tick that, the launch box will start having a look at where you sort of imported game ROMs from and so on, and will start to add other files in as games. That's, that's really not what we want to do. So, so do make sure you tick that box for disabling the auto import. We don't need to take, put in any of the other information yet, um, but we do need to go to the parents bit and we do need to say this is going to be a root category. So it's not going to sit inside any of these other sections. It's going to be sort of just on the root of that. So I'm going to click OK for that. We'll see it appearing up in here. So again, I've called it emulators. and I'm going to then uh, close that down. Now you'll see that we haven't yet seen it on the sidebar here, and that's because we haven't yet put any games into that platform. So, so platforms are hidden until the, we put some games into them. So let's go back up to our tools menu. We're going to go to our import, and we're going to come down here and we're going to manually add a game. So that brings up our game sort of entry um, box here. And again, there's a whole lot of things that we can add in for this, but there's only a few things that we need to do. So we're going to give this a title. So I'm going to call this by Retro Virtual Machine. So that's, that's the name of my emulator, obviously. Uh, again, if, if you want to fill other bits and pieces in, you can. The important bit here is that we need to tell it what platform this is. So if we pull this list box down, I find that it doesn't always list all of the platforms in here, but we know that we need to put it into the emulators platform. So that's what we've called it. OK, so we have given it our names. This is the name of our emulator. We're putting it into the emulators category. We now need to come down to our launching box. And this is where we tell it how we launch this. So we're going to create, we need to tell it where our application is. So this is where we need to know where that application executable file is. So we simply need to navigate out to where you've saved that. OK. So you need to know where that is. We select it and open it. So it's now going to use that as a reference to the file that it wants to run. So we now need to come down. So the rest of these bits here, if, if, if you know various command line parameters that make your emulator run in a certain way, then of course you can add those in. Okay. But for this one here, we just need to set, set that executable file. We then need to come down to the emulation section, and this is going to tell us how we actually run that game. So 
usually you would be using some sort of emulator to play this game and you can see here that that would sort of try and play it in Amiga forever. But if we untick that, what that's telling LaunchBox is that this is a standalone program. So we should just launch that file as if we were running a program. And that's how we get it to actually launch it without doing anything else. So if I say OK for that, we should now find that our emulators platform has popped up. If I go in there, we now have a game in effect, which is our retro virtual machine. And if I double click on that, Hopefully if everything's working okay, we should now have our emulator pop up and run. So that is everything sort of hooked up and ready to go. All we need to do now is to tidy up a little bit on these images and, and listings. So I'm currently sat here in the emulators platform. And as you can see down the side here, it's looking a bit bare. So we can start to edit this and add some information in. So obviously I'm going to need to get some sort of images pre-prepared. So you can go off, you can sort of download some from the internet or whatever. But if I come in then and edit this platform, and again, I can also do that from over here and I can go down and edit. But if I edit this, it brings up that edit platform dialog box. So again, um, a lot of this stuff in here, it isn't relevant to what we're doing at the moment. But if we come across over here to our images, we can actually add an image in. So a little plus box here. If I do that, I, I'm just going to use one of my YouTube thumbnail images. Again, any image you want to use, you can use in here. So I'm just gonna select that one and open that up. Now that's coming in as my banner image. I can, if I want, sort of add other images in here as well. And those will appear in different parts of the, of the sort of um, interface. Dep again, depending on what theme you're using, if you're using big boxes, other themes and so on. But all, all we need to do here is put a banner image in. And if I then say OK for that, we should find, if I now come in here, OK, and there's find it. All right, so we now have a little image here which will appear whenever we're in our emulators category. So that gets that sort of set up. We obviously then our game itself, so the actual emulator, we don't have any images yet for that. So we need to go off and grab something. So again, there's various ways you can get hold of an image. So I'm just simply going to go across and I'm going to go to the Retro Virtual Machine website. I'm going to grab hold of this little logo here. Now I use a package called Snagit, which lets me basically come in here and I can just simply select an area of the screen. And then I can say, I want to take that as an image. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to save that image and then I'm going to load that into my launch box. So back on our main interface screen here. So I have my retro virtual machine emulator um, holder there. If I right click on it, I can edit its data. And inside here, I can come down to my images section and I can add an image. I simply just need to find the image that I've just um, created and add that in. And then if I okay that, we should then find that our Emulator listing within our main sort of emulator section now has a nice graphic so we can see which one it is. And that should be everything set up. So we have our emulator platform. We have our actual emulator link here. If I double click on that, we have our emulator popping up and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna drop a few more of mine in here and then we'll see where we get to. So I've added in a few more of my emulators here. So again, this allows me now to run any of these as if I was just sat at the computer. So something like BBM for my BBC Micro, if I double click on that, that brings me up my BBC Micro. And again, I can now use it as the actual computer itself rather than having to go into a game. So same with some of these other ones, uh, something like the Commodore 64 Forever, that's very handy to be able to jump into that just as the actual package itself. Because of course, I can now go off and I can use not just the Commodore 64, but I could come in here into the systems and I could boot up a pet computer. And there we are into my Commodore pet.
So hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview now as to how we can set up a bit more of our emulation inside LaunchBox. And again, a, a few of the other packages such as Retrobat and so on, that they will do similar ideas. So that should let you get all of your emulators linked into LaunchBox so that you can use LaunchBox really to sort of as, as a launching pad for all of your home computer emulation. And again, that means you don't have to jump into a game. You can then actually just jump into the emulator and use that as the actual computer. So I hope you find this video useful. Um, do make sure you look at the rest of the videos in my Ultimate Emulation PC Setup series. And again, I'll put a link down to the playlist uh, in the description of this video. So if you've enjoyed this, please do click that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more gaming, emulation, modding, and electronics projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. And bye for now.